morning guys Woo. good morning guys it is a beautiful tuesday morning in october here in seoul and um we're gonna try and have a little halloweeny kind of day even though it's not halloween just yet by the time i post it it will be first stop is a bookstore hopefully today will be really lovely it already feels nice even though the air quality is not awesome but all of the unhang have turned yellow it feels like autumn i'm very happy i'm wearing my sabrina outfit my wednesday adams outfit so let's go get a book <laughs> So I am now filled with Don Hobak latte. That was supposed to be like a pumpkin spice latte, but it definitely just tasted like Don Hobak. But it was really nice and the apple cake was really great. But in order to keep with a more Halloween theme, um, I wanted to share just one, the kind of the only proper ghost experience I've had in Korea. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences. Unexplainable things happen to me in plenty of other places, but for some reason, Korea, um, I actually haven't had that many and I've told this story once before so if you if it sounds familiar you're not having deja vu deja écoute. <laughs> but I feel like this is the right time to talk about it so this is my one ghost story we're out in the lovely daylight in a park so hopefully you don't get too scared it wasn't I mean lots of time has passed so it feels less scary but um, just a warning here we go so when I studied abroad here part of my program we had a lot of different trips we went to japan we would go to different places in the countryside it was a really amazing program and during the autumn season we went to youngju i believe the city is called and it's basically famous for having just a really beautiful mountain so we went out there and we were going to spend the night and then the next day we were going to hike this beautiful mountain and it was beautiful but where we were staying overnight was actually this folk village where I think they use it to film dramas. I'm not sure. Red flags should have been flying right away because when we got there it was filled with mannequins. You know how I feel about those like hyper realistic mannequins of people and animals all throughout this village. So wherever you turned there was like a cow or like a woman waiting for you around the corner. We were already kind of on edge but it was fun you know like the group of people that I studied abroad with were amazing so we were always in like high spirits it was a great time always so I feel like we didn't pay attention to that little like 
dark feeling in our hearts <laughs> that, that came along when we entered this village. We divided into our sleeping rooms. It was like four people to a room, I think. And it was because it was just like a traditional hanok kind of thing. We were all sleeping on the floor. So we had floor mats and then these really heavy pillows. Like these are, I don't know if they're like old traditional Korean pillows, but they're like sandbags. So we're getting ready to go to bed. We're all laying down and there's really no furniture in our room except for this one big thing of drawers. And we're about to go to sleep. We're just like talking, hanging out, whatever. And suddenly I'm laying there and my pillow just flies out from under me as if someone just went like and pulled it out but like I said these were like sandbags and it went straight underneath the dresser drawers like there's no way that anyone could have like pushed it could have pulled it there like it was as if this unseen force just went like pulled it out from under me like to the point where I my head hit the ground it was disorienting like I at first didn't even register what happened because I was like what why is my head on the ground like what <laughs> where did my pillow go so it was very freaky and I do have I still have a photo um, that says it's the freaky room so um, there it is here's visual proof that we did have some strange experience in there I don't know how we ended up falling asleep I remember us being like all of us being quite freaked out um and we of course were like hyping each other up you know and then the next morning i went to go brush my teeth and it was like they had one bathroom outdoors you had to like go outside and to get to any kind of sink or anything like that so i went outside i could see the outside wall of our room where the pillow had been like thrown to thrown up against the wall underneath these dresser drawers behind that wall like right on the other side was this shrine and it didn't look like a typical korean kind of shrine it was it was very i don't know it was very odd and for it to be like usually i don't know shrines are usually like placed a little bit away from a building or something like that this was like right up against it very unclear as to what it was but it was just very odd that my pillow of all places was like thrown against this wall that has the shrine on the back so needless to say we were very freaked out and that was kind of my only paranormal experience here and i was actually talking to a friend about this um and we're both like i do definitely believe i, I wouldn't say like ghosts but like definitely energies and stuff like that and i was talking to a friend about why i didn't feel I, I don't feel it as much here as I do like when it comes to um, having weird energy feelings in America or whenever I would travel in like different places in Europe and stuff like that. And she brought up an interesting question about the different ways that cultures deal with death. And I would love to hear your opinions as well, but um, the ways that maybe Korea looks at death um, and like their culture surrounding death, perhaps that has something to do with the energy you feel when it comes to like dead spirits. I don't know, it was interesting. I had never thought of that before. Maybe that's something to look into, I don't know. But um, yeah, that was it. And then I always joked that my dorm room at Yonsei was haunted because it kind of was. Um, my first semester I lived on kind of the ground floor and um, as many rooms are in Korea, um, if you have like a electric key. Oftentimes you have to put it into a slot when you come into the room and that key um, controls the energy. So you can't like accidentally leave a light on if you leave the room um, because if you take your key with you, then the lights will automatically turn off. So there's there can't be electricity running while you are not home is something to keep in mind but you know my roommate and i we had different schedules so certain days i wasn't sure where she was but we had a lot of instances where like lights would turn off suddenly or um the room would be freezing cold as if someone had just had the air conditioner on and left the room like oh it must have been my roommate she must have left the air conditioner on she must have just left but then like five minutes later she would come in and be like wow the room's really cold carrie why did you turn the air conditioner on that sort of thing like we just had a lot of like it was all electricity related, so you could write it off, but we called her Roxanne and um, she was nice. I mean, it was like having a third roommate. It wasn't a big deal. So those are really my only paranormal instances in Korea. I would love to hear yours if you've had any. Yeah, overall, I think like 
in general, I feel very safe here, like walking around and stuff like that. They're, like the part of my brain that is constantly alert to danger or like to just strange things is a little bit more dormant um, than it is when I'm back in the United States, for example. So I feel like in the US, maybe I pick up on more things because I'm looking for it. I'm, this is turning into a very big tangent, but yeah, I just wanted to share those. There is the cutest, what? It's like a dachshund, but it's, proportions are off what a str okay i'm gonna try and capture this dog on camera um but yeah let's head over and get some lunch because now i'm just full of sugar um and let's continue the leaves are so gorgeous it is the perfect autumn day um i've got my skull earrings on so yeah i ended up now i'm going to the movies with a friend um at 8 p.m so we're gonna have to figure out what to do until then let's go I knew that a lot of things had changed and a lot of things had closed in Myeongdong. Um, okay, just fighter jets flying overhead. No big deal. It's never a big deal. I knew that things closed here, but I kind of wasn't quite aware of how many things closed here. A little sad. I know that overall Korea is doing quite well as far as like the economy. I think it's like the best in the world as far as like having the least amount of whatever economics I don't know words but it's still quite sad to see all these places closing um, the streets being quite empty because Myeongdong is really a neighborhood that is almost fully supported by tourism locals don't really come here that much so just hoping a lot of these places can hold on for a little bit longer but now let's head to where are we going oh, I can't even think with all these songs um, let's head to the Cheonggyecheon. Oh my god, every every store is playing a different song. Um, and then we're gonna head to Doksonggung for a nighttime palace walk. Oh my god, let's, let's, I need to stop talking. Bye! It is October 27th, Korea. Well, the air quality today is really not awesome. So we are gonna get a really pretty sunset. My hair is going crazy right now. Um, but now we are going to head to Daksung Palace, Daksunggung, because um, now it is open at night, I believe. I'm hoping if we get there and it's closed, I'm gonna be so sad. Um, but yeah, we're supposed to be able to walk around after the sunset. So that's what we are going to do. Right now we're just walking by the Cheonggyecheon gonna head down to City Hall and it's right there. It's the plan, let's do it. Okay, completely unrelated, but the last time I walked by the Chan, I saw a bunch of the egrets or cranes or whatever they are, those birds that I just saw another one. Does anyone remember those memes in the beginning of Corona where it was all like, we are the virus, like the earth is healing, like there are dolphins in Venice, all this stuff. Um, why does that feel like actually decades ago? <laughs> the stuff that happened in the beginning, like the beginning of this year, it just seems like it happened in another lifetime. Um, 
wild. But anyway, we made it to the beginning of the Chungichun. That is a trash can, I'm sorry. This is much better. So now to the palace. Um, it's actually a little bit crowded for a weekday night, but um, I understand why the foliage is so pretty. Um, I think everything really turned like honestly last night. Um, so we're just gonna take a little walk around. Um, I've been here a couple times before, but never with the foliage and never at night. So do I have stuff on my mask? My camera does not enjoy my white mask. It like cannot color correct it. So anyway, let's look around. So this palace is an interesting one because it actually has a bunch of Western style buildings. Um, and that is also a museum. Um, so I didn't, I don't think I bought the extra ticket that lets me in to the museum, but they're currently doing something where that whole section of buildings had Korean artists in there. Like each little room had a different little exhibit. Super cool. Um, unexpected. It's Tuesday and it's like I would say more crowded than I expected but um, still like very spread out not a whole like it doesn't feel crowded because this place is so big um, so yeah if you if you ever want to just go for a walk I actually just met a subscriber who is just studying there's a cafe here um, so if you want to come in study in a palace get a cup of coffee and just sit and read you can and this is a beautiful place to do it <laughs> so um, i'm gonna continue to walk the sun is almost setting it's going behind the last building um, and then let's walk through it at night The sun has set, but it is still bright out. <laughs> so I think just a bunch of us are just kind of sitting here waiting for um, it to get a little darker. They're supposed to illuminate the palace. I'm not sure what that actually means, what it, that's actually gonna look like. But um, either way, it's just really nice sitting in here. And the temperature is perfect. This is kind of the last warmish day that we have. It's in the 20s in Celsius obviously um and then we're gonna dip into the teens and we probably won't see another day of 20 degrees um for months and months and months so um it's very nice to be able to sit here quite warm in my little trench coat hope you guys are feeling real peaceful i know that my i got a lot of messages thank you guys so much um that my past couple of vlogs have been very healing and trust me I feel it too those trips were just so nice um so yeah next up I think we're going to Jeju I think is the next video anyway it's just me a couple people and a really noisy bird as always so <laughs> I'm gonna wait for it to get a little bit darker and then let's go to the movies And the moon, I can't really capture it. I tried on my phone and this camera. I'm using my other camera. Um, it's orange tonight. One of those. Do you guys remember the movie The Kid with Bruce Willis? I remember watching that movie a lot as a kid, but 
I can't remember a dang thing about it, but I remember them asking about why the moon is orange sometimes. And I still don't fully remember the answer, which I'm sure my father will be very angry with me about. But um, yeah, it's, it's really, really pretty. I've never been in this area when the bell rings. Why is it ringing now? Is it six o'clock? I'm so confused. Okay. Okay, so my friend Katie actually works in this area and I swear to God, like once a week, she posts about these waffles. She gets one for lunch and I'm always so jealous and this entire street smells like fresh waffles. Everyone is eating them. But I need like a proper dinner and to not be hit by a car, so. <laughs> of plans so the Korean working culture is hard on everybody so um, my friend who I was gonna meet up with was basically like I have no time for dinner I'm very tired so um, let's reschedule so we're rescheduling I'm going home look at this really beautiful flower shop how pretty um, yeah I'm gonna head home and it actually works out perfectly because Kurt is also sick, like just tired from work, like you just get sick, exhausted. That's what he is, so I'm gonna head home, make sure he is going to sleep instead of playing video games. <laughs> and um, yeah, I will see you at home, how about that? I'm gonna take a really long bus ride with my headphones, listening to some nice autumn music. It's been a great day, it's been a fantastic day, okay. Um, see you at home then. Bye. Hello, I'm home. Um, I am making some tea. I'm making some tangerine tea. I'm gonna get that vitamin C because I'm not getting a cold. I always get a cold when the seasons change. Not this year. I say it every year, but not this year. Kurt is not home. He was supposed to come home early from work today uh, because he is sick, but he is still working. So I am waiting for him. Ooh, I wanted to add this to my list. I saw somebody say that The Queen's Gambit on Netflix is good. So I'm adding that to my list. I'm not going to watch it right now. I'm going to watch ahem, the second season of The Alienist is out, but I actually never read Angel of Darkness or I don't remember reading Angel of Darkness, which is like kind of like the sequel. Um, and so season two is technically based on that book. I don't know, I only watched one episode. I love Dakota Fanning's character so much in it. Um, so I'm gonna continue watching that. Also, I wanna watch The Trial of Chicago 7 just because What's his name? Eddie Redden, Redden Main, Reddy Main, him? Love him. What the hell is his accent? I've only seen the trailer. Is he supposed to sound like he's from Chicago? Because... You want to underscore again that we're coming to Chicago peacefully, but whether we're given permits or not, we're coming. Editing Carrie, different day, same outfit. Um, just want to be clear. I love Eddie. I love Eddie so much. Um, I don't, my, I think I was like hungry and tired. I feel like as I'm editing this, I seem so annoyed and annoying. So I apologize, but Eddie, no hate, love you. So yeah, I'm gonna watch The Alienist. I'm gonna drink tea. That's what the day is gonna be. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you are in Seoul, I do recommend that you go to that palace at night. I believe the other palaces are doing it as well where you can walk around at night. I'm not sure, but I know that um, Duxu is. Yeah, it was just like lovely and calm and it was a dollar. It was chunun to go in. So 
yeah, highly recommend. Um, and if you're watching this on Halloween, happy Halloween. If you're watching this on November 1st, happy November. If you're watching any other time, hope you're having a good day. Talk to you guys then. Bye.